banks for your company, Men's Gold Company Limited, an investment company, has announced that it shall close its gold vault market. A statement issued by the company says, quote, the gold vault market shall be closed from Friday, 15 September 2017 until further notice. The announcement signed by management of Men's Gold said the company will continue with its roles as a gold trading firm. The statement added that, quote, Men's Gold is committed and shall continue to discharge its existing contractual obligations under all gold trading contracts or its cherished clients, end quote. On the phone line to help us understand this process is the corporate manager of Men's Gold, Nanayao Ofe. Thank you for your time, sir. Yeah. Uh, now, what, you, what, what is the meaning of this public notice? Okay, I would want to say good afternoon to your cherished listeners. It is a gold dealership firm uh, that has been dealing in his first machine of the Republic of Ghana. Um, all we do revolves around the sale and purchase of gold. Now we have over six products. And then um, the gold vote market happens to be one of these products. Now, my system records that all these um, products are, are, are very well, they are doing very well on the market. And um, the gold vote, which um, until recently, he had, had had some uh, concerns coming from certain sectors of, of, of the public. We believe that most Ghanaians or quite a number of Ghanaians do not really have a proper understanding as to what the product is. And so um, the board and management has decided that uh, to close the vote, the gold vote market, and then do proper sensitization of the public so that they get a better understanding of the product. Uh, before we, we, we reintroduce it. And so if we say we are closing down the, 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 the fourth market, what it means is that we are not accepting new uh, entries or new uh, applicants onto the, the gold vote market onto, onto further. Mm. So you're not shutting down entirely? No. You know, as per the nature of the product, we still have contracts with people who have already subscribed onto the system or to the platform. And so we owe them an obligation to... to to satisfy our part of the, of the contract. Mm. And so we would continue to serve them until whatever contractual duration we owe them expand. Mm. Then, then we can we can deal with it. Uh, Mr. Fai, you've mentioned that uh, yeah. some uh, agitation in, in the public space for some time has necessitated this. But what are the other reasons you are taking this move apart from that? Well, uh, basically, you know, just as we mentioned, the, the, the gold vote market as such that the market opens and it closes. That is how the, the company um, formulated that product. Mm. And so uh, it's um, getting these concerns that we want to really do sensitization. Uh, we believe it is, it is time we close the market in and then we, 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 we restructure things. So are you saying that uh, the closure of the vault uh, market is as a result of uh, recent happenings with the Bank of Ghana and also uh, that expose <coughs> about you not being uh, affiliated to Swiss Gold? No, it has got nothing to do with that. You know, just as I mentioned, it looks like what we are seeing is that uh, the understanding really is not there as to how the product or what the product actually is. And so we owe the public a responsibility of ensuring that we give them a better understanding of what the product is. And that, is, that has informed this decision. Mm. Uh, so what becomes of your existing customers? Well, just as I mentioned, we have, we have an obligation, we have a contractual obligation with them, you understand. And so we we'll continue to exercise that obligation until whichever period of the, of, of, of it's involved, so that um, after whatever period that we, the contract would, would, the duration would be, uh, we will continue to serve them until the, the, the contract duration is passed. Mm, and so they can rest assured that their, uh, their, their gold deposits and investments uh, will be working for them? Exactly. We are, we are still in operation. Yes, we are still in operation. It is just a product that we are shutting down. And we, just as I mentioned, we have other six products which are which is working and operating. And so it's just one of the products that we are shutting down. The entire, the, the entire presence of Mexico.
All right. Many thanks for your company. Nana Yao Ofei is the corporate manager of Men's School Limited, explaining uh, why the company has to shut down its uh, gold vault market. Uh, away from that, President Akufuado is expecting a smooth takeoff of the free senior high school policy despite anticipated issues. In two weeks, new entrants to the senior high school will enjoy tuition and other amenities free. At a short program to launch a logo for the policy, President Akufuado says government is determined to sustain the policy. The first country in the world, in modern times anyway, to institute a system of free secondary public education was the United States of America. And the United States of America did this a century ago, at a time when their level of development was not very much more than ours. I hope that all of us in Ghana can see the connection between that <coughs> event and where America is today as an economic, the economic power of the world. I believe that if we understand that connection, we will all support this initiative. Uh, there will be in any new initiative some wrinkles, some glitches. But if we understand that it is important, not because a political party has made it its mantra and that the, the promise that it made has been fulfilled, but because it goes to the heart of what we need to do to get our country going. Our country is abundant with talent, with creativity, with people who have all kinds of contribution to make to the development of our society. What we need to do is to provide them the opportunity to express themselves. And if that opportunity is provided, I think very, very, very rapidly, we'll see the transformation that all of us want to see in Ghana. I want to thank the Minister for Education and all the hardworking people that have helped him in the education sector that they have brought us to this day. My prayer is that in two weeks' time, when the program unfolds, it will do so to the satisfaction of all of us, and that a day will come when all of us will recognize that this was an important initiative for the future of our country. Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, Professor Kwesi Yanka, explains the rationale behind the logo. The design highlights an open book on which is suspended a sketch of two delighted school children leaping in jubilation. And beneath the symbol are three words, access, equity, and quality boldly inscribed. The open book represents learning that generates hope and optimism for a prosperous Ghana. The central symbol portrays two children emerging from a pleasurable learning experience as they spontaneously explode in joy. They are beneficiaries of a policy that lifts the total burden of fees from parents. But their animated mood also represents optimism for a brighter tomorrow. The highlighted themes of access, equity, and quality underline the principles that drive the policy. Access. The policy aims at widening access to senior high school education and education in general. Equity. This is a fundamental driver in any social intervention program. Poverty, gender deprivation should no longer be barriers to education. The government is eager to ensure a fair and a just society where there are equal opportunities for all, irrespective of family circumstances. Quality. The expected expansion of access to education will be achieved without the need to compromise quality. The package comes with its qualitative instructional material improvement in the school infrastructure, as well as teacher motivation and capacity building for them. The open book stands for learning that is made accessible so others can share.
Free education is the foundation for national development. The task force deployed to enforce the ban on illegal mining says it has arrested close to 200 persons, including eight foreigners who were caught engaging in the illicit activity. Commander of the Operation Vanguard team, Colonel William Japong, describes the operation as successful, saying the team has been able to gather a considerable amount of intelligence that has led to hundreds of arrests after only 30 days. He's been speaking in an exclusive interview with Love News, Erastus Asari Donko. We have made as many as 197 arrests, uh, 100 in the Western region, 58, um, 59 in the Ashanti region, in the Eastern region, and then 37 in the uh, Ashanti region. Uh, we have illegal miners who have their ages between 17 and 55. Uh, I must say that among these 197, we have as many as eight foreigners. We have one Nigerian who was arrested in Pristia. We have one Burkinabe who was also arrested around Huni Valley. And then we have six Chinese who were arrested in Ashanti region. In fact, for the Chinese, we arrested three near Oboise on, that was yesterday, and then last two days on Monday at Tontokrum, we arrested three of them. All these suspects, knowing that until they are pronounced guilty by a competent court of law, have been kept at the various police stations, and they are undergoing the various prosecution procedures. So it has gone very well. We have had a lot of equipment which we have seized. And, uh, so looking back for a month now, I must say, we have been able to rid this country of as many as 197 illegal miners. And you can imagine what these people can do to this country within the past 30 days. The commander who is overseeing three army bases in the eastern, western and Ashanti regions where illegal mining is rife also warns the task force won't rest until all those destroying water bodies and forest reserves are arrested and prosecuted. It's been five months since the pan was stated but it will marvel, it will marvel you that when you go around in some part of the areas they are doing this activity with impunity. Some are as close as 10 meters from major roads. So it tells you that these are people who don't have any respect for rules and regulations. They don't think well of the country. And for them, it is their personal interest. Yep. And maybe I can say it's their greed, because it, it, it marvels me that despite this ban, despite the clarion call by the good people of this country, the clergy, and major groups in the society, we still have people who are become, if I can call them, they are adamants, they are recalcitrant, they are non-conformists, they are iconoclasts. They don't want to conform to the rules. And that is why we have this kind of situation. But we are coming for them. We are going to all the areas that we know they are operating. And we'll get them so that due process will take place. The Public Procurement Authority has extended its imminent probe of SNIT's $72 million automation system to all other procurement activities of the Trust, at least for 2015. Recent expose of how the Trust sank over $72 million into software which is yet to fully function has triggered calls for the entire investment portfolio of SNIT to be thoroughly reviewed. Speaking on Joy News' current affairs show Upfront, Head of the Public Procurement Authority, Ajeni Mbwating Ejay, said the probe will also be extended to high-spending government institutions like those in the energy sector. What we've said is that we will be conducting an independent uh, audit, uh, procurement audit investigation 
uh, in accordance with our mandates. Mm -hmm. So we don't know when PWD has started and when it's going to complete, but we are going to conduct uh, an independent. When are you starting? Um, I'll put a team together sometime next week. And so in the next uh, couple of days, we should be able to give them an information or notify them of uh, this audit. And this is because you suspect there's something fishy with the arrangement? This is because we have a responsibility that any time the authority has information that there is a misprocurement or anything that is untold is happening in any entity, we could go in and do a more detailed investigation. When and did you get our this investigation, information? Did I get what information? Asking, when did you get the lead that really there's something happening at SNP? Well, the information can come in various forms. Whether I'm, just, the, I'm just seeking to know when you got it. This particular information? Yes. Well, um, it will not be the first of its kind because, we've, as I told you, we've even when somebody... So you started your own query before the Bruhaha over... Absolutely, the point. You started? Yes. Okay. So uh, now, this is... Would it be beyond the OBS? Because we understand there's another 150 million projects that's also on its head. Would it be beyond the OBS we're not, we're not. We're not going just because of this OBS contract. So you are reviewing We're going SNES? to do investigation of SNES procurement at least for the year 2016 mm -hmm. and possibly extend it to 2015 if time permits. Are they the only years that SNES has done procurement or these are the only years you're interested in? Well, of course, we can do procurement, uh, we can do investigation for the past eight years. But then if you want to get um, uh, your hands on and information that could lead you to do other more detailed investigation, you must start from somewhere. So this is just a starting point. Okay, but my very interesting point I also want to find out from you is now we know SNITS on your radar. Which other institutions are on your radar? We wouldn't say any institution is on our radar. We have a responsibility to audit every single procurement entity. But you have to start the, from somewhere. Yeah, Where so, are you starting from? So we are, we are just going to um, start maybe put our concentration on the high span institutions. Okay, so SNIT and those in the energy sector? No, we wouldn't because say you energy sector. We are talking about high span, high span entities. VRA. Raymond, high span entities. VRA, they could ECG. Be, they could be any um, industry. They could belong to any industry. But we will put our efforts in the high span entities so that if we are able to detect any form of, uh, you know, misprocurement of which we could recommend the recovery of any sums of money, it will be more meaningful than going after somebody who is uh, uh, done misprocurement for a 6,000 contract. My last question will be to find out from you that you have actually given a leeway. Which specific provisions of the Public Procurement Act give you the mandate to do this outward review or audits of the procurement processes of the various institutions? Section 89, to be precise. The authority has in recent times come under criticism for allegedly spending $97 million on a procurement website. But Mr. AJ says the authority spent only $1.7 million on the product. He says the new system will help curb the frequent abuse of the procurement procedures. I want to say emphatically yes. that PPA, and for that matter, the e-government procurement contracts, it's not 97 million, it is 1.7 million dollars. And I want you to take this from me, and I want viewers to take it that the PPA has not entered into any contract of 97 million. The contracts in question for the e procurement projects is 1,775,000 and $84.25, to be precise. Would you be amenable to any other state institution's review of this particular um, contract? Come again? Would you be amenable to any other state institution's review, security agencies, the people who can actually investigate to determine whether you're, what you told me reflects the facts or is just misleading? You don't need a security agency to get, come get this fact. I can give you a copy of the contract tomorrow and from, then you where, can, from where I say it's merely having contracts do not necessarily tell me the truth entirely. 
what, what else will, will give you the truth? An when we go an independent review of the process. There's nothing are like you, a review. Are you, you want to, to that particular Raymond, you review. want to come and find out whether we have a contract of 1.75 million or we have a contract for 97 million. Very simple. Anybody in GSS can walk into this office and ask for that, and we'll be able to provide that information. Would you publish that document? You mean the contract? Yes. Oh, we'll be more than willing to do that. When are you publishing it? I, I will just ask my corporate affairs to consider publishing this information. No, you said you'll be willing to do that. You say you're going to consider publishing it. Yes. Can you make a definite statement on when you are publishing this? That's what I'm saying, that I will contact my corporate affairs head mm -hmm. and arrange to do that publication. You're watching Joy News today. We'll take a quick breather now. <music>